Hi everyone, welcome back to another Saku's Art Classroom. Yay! So today is our third lesson and we will be going over doo -doo 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 colors. This is also a very high suggested topic, so I thought I'd cover it and tell you guys about what I researched and how I personally use color in my own art. Firstly, let's go over the different types of colors. The first type of color is the primary colors, and everyone probably already knows this. This kind of forms the basis of all the different hues. Because if you mix any of the primary colors, you can basically get any color of the rainbow. So secondary colors is basically just that. Mixing red and yellow, you get orange. Mixing yellow and blue, you get green. And mixing red and blue, you get purple. And going even further, you can mix the secondary colors to get the tertiary colors and mixing it on and on until you basically get every single color on the color wheel. While I was researching, I was actually a bit confused because when I personally learned primary colors, I learned they were red, green, and blue based on the RGB scale, right? Well, I was not completely wrong because there are actually two types of ways you can mix colors, which is the additive color mixing and the subtractive color mixing. So the additive ah, <laughs> so the additive color mixing can be done through light and combining them makes white. While the subtractive here is through the subtraction of light. So the primary colors can be different and there's actually different definitions. I'm not an expert, so you guys can all do more research yourself. Why every time I film does it have to have construction? It literally just started when I'm filming. Okay, anyways. <clears throat> Here I also wanted to do the definitions of hues, brightness, and saturation. So if you're familiar with any digital program, you probably already or have heard of these three terms. But I'm just going to do a quick definition. So hue is any spot on the color wheel and it refers more to the specific tone of the color. And hue is different to color even though a lot of us will get it mixed up because color is actually made up of all three of these things combined whereas hue is just like a spot, a specific thing. Brightness, I think everyone knows this, is just light and dark from black to white. And if you don't know this, black and white creates the highest contrast out of any colors on the wheel. And saturation is very straightforward. It's just the, intens the intensity from gray tone to a very bright and saturated color. So if you still don't get it, I'll do a demonstration with here. You can see if I change the hue, it adjusts this. And you can see it's like flashing different colors. Okay. If I adjust brightness. Oops, wrong button. Oh! No more Saku cat. So if I adjust the brightness, you can see it goes from black to white. <laughs> so you can see this is how it changes. And for saturation, if I adjust that, you can see it goes from a gray scale, not black, to the brightest color. And I guess this is already a really bright color. So please keep that in mind. So next, I'm going to be talking about the different color schemes you can use in art. You probably heard of this. The first type is called monochromatic scheme. And the definition is of relating to or made with a single color or hue involving or producing visual images in a single color or in varying tones of the single color, such as gray, monochromatic film. So basically, it's just using the same color. So here's an example. Tragedy by Picasso. You can see Picasso only uses blue in this artwork to kind of emphasize it and different colors kind of have different meanings as well, which I will get to more later. <laughs> Complementary colors is our next color scheme. So basically it's just a cross in the color wheel and the list goes on. So I'm going to show you guys one of the examples of one of my favorite artists, which is called James Jean. Uh, he uses a lot of complementary color schemes in his artwork, and I think it really emphasizes it. The reason why different people use the complementary color scheme is mainly for juxtaposition, because they're on the opposite side of the wheel, right? So that kind of makes each other look brighter, and it'll also create a natural shadow effect. Next is the triadic colors, and if you can't tell, it means three because it's like triangle, and it's basically like here, here, and here. It's like three of the opposite. So you have a wheel, right? And you just kind of split it into three sections, and that's how you get your triadic colors. So triadic colors, and I use this photo specifically, is just because colors cannot just only be used for art. It's kind of used for everything as well, from nature to like films to like interior design, you know, everything. 
So, triadic colors is mainly used to create vibrant colors and playful tones. This is why you can see it's more for like children's decor. I mean, like Superman and this one here. Well, Joker is not very children, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's based on like clowns, and clowns are like mainly for children, right? So. So now I'm telling you guys all of this information. Why, you may ask, is because knowing this information can kind of apply it to your art because you can use these different color schemes or different effects as I mentioned earlier and now you have a better understanding on the different primary colors. Primary colors stand out a lot more than the secondary colors because they're the primary colors so you can keep that in mind what to use and how to do it. So as for colors and shading, so I personally am an art history nerd, if you cannot tell. So when I was like looking at all these paintings throughout at different times, there's one thing that I really noticed that, that stuck out to me and I used it for my own artworks since. So here is Edward Hopper's Morning Sun. Very, very cool. I love Edward Hopper. So as you can see here, if you look very closely, you can see the shading here is like blue instead of black. Can you stop constructioning? Oh my god. And you can see here, even for the walls, it's blue here. And it's like yellow here. And even here, it's more blue here. And I was like wondering to myself, like why does Edward Hopper use these colors? And why does that like make it look so nice? Here's another example. This is by Monet. And it happens again here. So here is a painting by Monet. You can see not only he uses the triadic color scheme with the red, yellow, and blue, but also, look again, its shading is like blue, like really bright and saturated colors than black. And I was really thinking to myself, like, why did they use like these saturated colors for shadows instead of actually using a darker color? Here's just another example. This is during the Rococo period, which is super long ago compared to the first two I showed you. And you can see here, again, scroll in. This is part is blue. Here's blue. This is blue. And just like, why are they using really bright blues as shadows rather than using a darker color? I was really confused why different paintings did this and why it looks so good. Well, I finally have an explanation for you guys. So I watched a video a while ago, it's by Marco. You can go check it out, I'll link it in the description, and that video taught me a lot on why different painters did this. By the way, this is just a screenshot of the video I watched, so I highly recommend watching that video. So here you can see it's just colors, right? Very basic and standard, but if you actually grayscale and make this photo black and white something magical appears well magical I, I don't know if it's magical but i thought it was magical okay okay so you can see here the tones even though this is all just your standard rainbow the values are different <laughs> and this is why so many artists use a really saturated blue for example as their shadows instead of using black is because if you think about it the saturation even though it's even though it's highly saturated the tone is still very dark which makes it perfect for shading while still appearing that really bright and playful saturated colors without dimming or d making the color scheme very dull which is why people use it that's that simple i know this concept might be a bit hard to grasp at first but basically um even though it might appear bright because it's a saturated color it's not it's it's dark which is why people still use these bright saturated colors especially like this column as shading which i thought was really cool and because of that i started using it to my own artwork too for example, here, I just drew Killua. I'm using my own artworks, for example, because I know a lot of you guys tend to draw like cartoon anime style similar to mine, which is drastically different to the painting that I showed you earlier, but you can see that everything in art transfers to each other. And I kind of want to like spread that message too. It's just like, don't just like confine yourself to like looking at a, one specific type of art because like so many different types of art can like inspire you too. 
Okay, so anyways, here is my Killua drawing. You can see here, for the dark areas, I still use blue, dark blue, dark purple, dark blue. Here, while the brighter colors, I just love adding like saturated like brightness not just white not using grayscale but using saturation colors and same for here and that really like dramatically makes my artwork pop more because i'm using very bright colors than just like a gray dull scheme of course not anything against gray and dull paintings it's just that will give a different mood to the playful tone i'm going for Again, just another fan art I did. I'm just saying you, all these paintings can help you with your fan art, not just like really academic work, just anything you draw actually. So yeah, same logic here. You can see I use blues here to shade. And while the brighter colors, I use red and yellow because as you can see here, they're especially yellow. They're really bright compared to the blue and purples. So I use that as contrast, juxtaposition, complementary colors you see all of those definitions that like you might be like wow what, what, what why do i need to know this they still come into play in your like average daily fan art so i'm just saying it's really useful to know all of it another example is here my fan art of hoshi from 17 i'm doing it in a more realism style this time just to show you guys like colors can be applied to any different type of style you choose to draw in and you can see same here i use blue and purples here while the brighter side i also use blue and purples because it was going through the tone while his skin color is very warm and that kind of juxtaposes as well so there are different ways you can use complementary colors to really help bring out different aspects that you want the viewer to focus on in your artwork so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say in this video as for takeaways, just um, using colors to help you achieve mood slash tone or focal points. So really figure out what kind of mood you're going for for your artwork and what you want the viewers to focus on so you can base your colors around that. Um, the next point is know your definitions. You can always come back to this video and rewatch it if you forget or just google it yourself and there are plenty of other videos that are probably better at explaining than me so you guys can go watch that too just know that knowing colors will help you with your art knowing all these academic terms and actually like i know it's like summer and i'm like kind of there's like many school vibes going on right now but like it really helps you to know and I just really like learning if you can't tell. Yeah, so that's the main takeaways as for homework. So I really thought like long and hard, like how can I critique your colors? And the final conclusion I came up with is that I can't really like give you guys exercises on colors. Instead, this is what I want you guys to do if you guys are free, of course. So task one is to make a collage page or a sketchbook page or you can do it digitally as well. Basically, research art with great colors. So there's sometimes you like come across an, a piece of artwork you really like, and then you go like, oh my God, that color is just like so slay. I really love the colors. So basically just um, screenshot it, print it out. I don't know, and then put it in your sketchbook and collage, and then take some notes on why you like the color so much. What colors did they use for shading? What colors did they use for light and kind of just take notes, um, maybe do like three to four, actually it depends on how many fit into your page. And also remember to take notes on all the definitions I came up earlier. That's kind of what I want you guys to do for homework is just to take notes and really remember because if you take notes, it's scientifically proven that you'll remember them more than if you just listen. So yeah. And then the second task is just send any color illustration you've done in the past and then I'll critique the colors you use and how I think what I would do to make your artworks really better. Try doing full illustrations than just like a person um, with maybe with backgrounds but if you don't have that just any colored work will be okay. So 
yeah, that's it. I think the homework here is pretty fun. Like, I would willingly do the first one especially. So yeah, um, have fun. I'm looking forward to it. You can submit it through the Google form link in the description slash the pinned comment. The homework will be due next Monday, which is July 25th. But all the details will be listed more in the Google form. So go check it out. Um, if you haven't already, watch my previous Saku Arts classrooms. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.